Yeah. So Nick, apparently this is the latest I've stayed up since Corona. Um, I mean, I know this is because everyone in my town is complaining about the fireworks that are either 4th of July or protests or something else worse. And I'm like, I don't hear that. I don't hear that. And I was, uh, <laughs> I've had this conversation with several patients. I'm like, well, we moved, we don't hear it. And my kid walked in on me in the middle of a patient session and was like, mom, last night, all night, you just don't stay up enough to hear it. So, uh, Oh my God, that's hilarious. I know wine. It cures everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, except for weight gain. It does not cure that. Um, it doesn't cure that. Nick, thank you so much. Um, you have been on the podcast before and we talked a lot about hot dogs, which was weird. And, yes. um, but I have a lot of them in my freezer because my husband is afraid that we're going to run out of food. So now I'm all about those dirty <laughs> dogs. Um, I know. I know. I didn't realize. My husband's like, I'm cool, but he's actually a hoarder of food right now. Um, so you are a, a kick-ass personal trainer. Um, you are close with my former co-host who probably left me for you. Come to think about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and I absolutely adore and respect you. And, um, just for what we were talking about before, um, a few weeks. Okay. Time has no meaning. I have, hold on, I'm going to show it to you. I have been keeping a list as though I'm in jail. Oh my gosh. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So, um, that, that is wild. Yeah, I know, right? And every day I mark it off, I'm in prison. Um, time has no meaning for me, but a few weeks ago, it was traumatic and it was traumatic for me and in a very, yes, I get it, like white fragility, I'm a spoiled little bitch way, but um, I posted something online that I did not mean to be um, insensitive and um, I said that I wanted to stop the violence of the riots, but I said riots, not violence. And I have several friends and patients who have, um, husbands or boyfriends who are police officers. So the thing about social media is they're not so open um, to anything. I posted on Facebook and I suddenly found out that friends were not my friends and or I was not their friend based on this comment. Um, and so I called Sharon, my former lover, your current, I do not mean that in a biblical way. Um, and I cried and I was like, cause I was like, why didn't you defend me? She's like, I didn't even see it, bitch. And I was like, okay. Um, but she mentioned that you had been talking a lot about this too, where I was simultaneously told to shut up and let the black people handle it verbatim or to um or end to um step up and do something with my quote white privilege i do believe white privilege exists i'm just putting it in quotes because it's mm -hmm. a term and it was very confusing and when i cried to sharon about it she's like you should talk to nick because he also has been talking about this um uh additionally your wife paula is I'm going to say white because I'm stupid and I know she's not black, but she seems very white, no? Yeah, she's white. <laughs> God, because I cannot handle getting called a racist again. Um, oh, and so gosh. I kind of wanted to talk to you, not as in like a speak, please speak for all, um, but because that's awful, but as in like a, what do we do? How do we handle it? What's the middle ground? And like, yeah. Uh, how do we change this divisiveness, you know? Because we went yeah. from Democrats versus <clears throat> Republicans, you know, people that wanted to grab the pussy versus not grab the pussy, um, to now we're into race relations, which we should be into, but I wish we weren't being so divisive. So help me understand. Yeah, yeah. And also, you don't have kids. You. you have dogs, so, you know. I have a dog. Yeah, yeah. 
And first thing I want to say is like, thank you for just like asking me because I love having these, I call them uncomfortable conversations. So do I, I. so do I, yes, yes. And part of it is like my, to put it in a nutshell, like I believe in this, journey to kind of like it's still crazy that we're fighting over that hey racism is not okay one that still bothers my mind where i'm like another day but oh not another day but can i just say wait not another day um i do believe racism started as a biological survival mechanism that we have long since fucking outgrown and we just need to um overcome it like I am not saying we should be racist. I am saying that there was a a time long ago where like cavemen ask for looking to further their genetic codes and people who look like you were more likely to have the same interests in you and to war with you rather than war for you. That being said, we're not there and we haven't been there in a long Mm -hmm. time. And um, I know my biological evolutionary perspective upsets some, but my point is, uh, listen, we've done a lot of bad shit in the past. Like, I'm pretty sure I was birthed and um, grown on, like, weed and um, booze and probably tab because they didn't know better in the 50s and 60s. It was barbiturates. So, um our past should not dictate our future slash present. So that that's right. Right. Right, Yeah. And I get that. And I understand that too. And especially when like being black and you're looking at it, it's like, yes, a lot of those things happen in the past, but the past is very real and present for like a lot of people in family. Like, uh, growing up, my great grandmother, my grandmother, my dad was from South Florida. Like, I remember him telling me stories where he's working out in the field uh, and, you know, doing sugar cane and doing stuff like that. And I'm sure that, you know, it's not too far off, like the, the generations that were slaves. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a plantation, even though we won't call it one. But where in South Florida, by yeah. the way? Have we discussed this? He was from a place called Moore Haven, Florida. Okay. Because I grew yeah. up in South Florida. Um, that's the only reason I was asking. Yeah, but... it was like two hours south of Orlando, maybe. Uh, like an hour west of Fort Lauderdale. We call that racist country, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so... we don't really call it that, but like, I I know. Yeah. I know what it's like there. Yeah. Um, Florida is a weird place. The more north and west you get, the more you're in the deep south. So. Yeah, yeah. And I believe, like, going through this stuff, like, my overview and kind of my thing. One, I hate, I don't hate. I can't respect problem finders that aren't willing to also find a solution. Because when we're looking at things, we have to be solution-based. And what happens, how that divisiveness comes is just like in your situation. Somebody sees something and they're like, no, you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that you should do and then it causes a rift instead of maybe messaging you behind and being like hey i saw you did this like just letting you know this is how it made me feel right maybe we should talk it out to get like that because what happens is and i see it happen a ton and which is a real reason why i started like speaking my voice because even paula was feeling uneasy about sharing stuff she's like well what if somebody you know calls me a racist or that i'm like one who cares Two, show them your show them your card we have a joke as jews yeah. it's like your Jew yeah. card you know um yeah. but no uh i agree but i also think with paula i imagine there's some there is some fear you know like yeah. something happening to you you know yeah well it was fear like one happening to me which we you know live with like we accept that but also on the side of her sharing something and being called out for it. And I told her, I was like, you just got to go for it because when you start going for solutions, that's how you make the change. There's going to be people who are going to find problems and that's them. 
we can't help them right now. Right now, we need to take the people who are speaking, who are trying. It's like somebody trying to learn how to ride a bike for the first time. You're going to fall off. You're going to get skinned up, but you're still trying to ride the bike. And I believe I see people like you. I know you. I love you. I know it's coming from a good place. And you can kind of get off of the surface level and then get down into like, hey, this is amazing that you're even bringing this up and talking about it. But you need to know that, right. And working on that. And the thing is, too, this is everybody's, like, um, Brene Brown. Do you know Brene Brown? Of course I know Brene Brown. Yeah. I'm a woman. I'm a woman who doesn't worship yet. First fucking time. Yeah. First fucking time. We're going through something that it's everybody's first fucking time. And even... I don't have all the answers. You don't have all the answers. But collectively, we can get some answers and make some change. And with that, there's many different ways to do that. There are, I like to look at it as a football analogy because it's easy for me to explain. I got football. I got it. Yes, you got football. So on the team, there's quarterbacks, people pushing you know, trying to be on offense, trying to score touchdowns. Offense, defense, wide All receivers, tight ends. I got you, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Within the offense, there's also people that play offensive line that they're not necessarily getting their name caught out when a touchdown is scored, but they're an essential part of it. Then there's the defense. The defense is there trying to stop people from getting in. That's like the front lines. You know, we don't want to let them into the the really neat. Like, we need to protect ourselves, so the defense is there to protect them. All the way down through coaches, assistants, people who you don't even see. Water boys. That are still contributing to the call. People who are cleaning the locker room, who are cutting the grass, setting up the field. Nobody knows their name but none of it would happen without them. Then you have people who want to come and watch and support the fans. You know, they're buying merchandise. They're buying tickets. They're there cheering everybody on. Even to the people who are at home watching TV. Maybe they're not spending money. Maybe they don't have money to spend. Maybe the way they can contribute is being in a position to watch and cheer. Maybe that's the person when you're out and they see something wrong, they speak up about it. Right. They have their voice. They're not on the front lines. They're they're not gung ho when you know shit hits the fan. They're not the ones out in the front lines. Maybe they're not donating money. Maybe they are. The point is everybody has a part to play. And as long as you're playing your part and doing the best that you can do, that's how this all changes that's how solutions start coming up and realizing i would say in your instance be like hey thank you yes we need to change that they got charged and now yes riots do need to stop do i understand one million percent why people riot yes i understand that i don't know if i do i don't know if i did before People started yelling at me and making me cry. So that was the upside. Um, You know, and, uh, but yes, I think I would have preferred, you know what, it doesn't really matter what I prefer because I have the luxury of being comfortable in many situations that people of color do not. And so um, just because I was made uncomfortable, I don't, I don't know that that's valid. I think it's the fact that I was made I really felt attacked by people that I have known and loved for years. And, um, you know what I say to that? I say, cause I have a couple of friends that's happened to. Okay. There's you, you post something, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a black guy. Here's your friend. Wait, you're a black guy. I'm a black guy. (laughs) Your friend is coming and attacking and doing it. Now, what happens is, it's not the three of us trying to find a solution. Now, there's another problem with you and your friend. Yeah. 
that's why I have issues with people attacking and berating like, hey, somebody's trying. You don't you don't go and see somebody struggling and be like, you know what? Like somebody just fell down on the ground. You don't walk over and be like, hey, you're a piece of shit and step over them. No, you go up and try like, oh my God, what happened? Are you okay? Like, how can I understand you better? That's the issue I have. Because there's, you see it all the time. Somebody posts something, they're like, no, you're not doing it right. You're doing it wrong. You're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. Okay. And then the craziest thing I see happening is a lot, of, and I don't know if this is true in your situation or not, but I see white people posting stuff trying to help, okay? We're all on the same team. And then another white person is bashing them like you're not helping the right way. So there was another white person bashing me, but they were a minority in a different way, like uh, uh, gender, sexuality. And so apparently yeah. that trumps, apparently there's a hierarchy. Um, and I'm on the bottom. No white men are on the bottom. But, um, you know, I think that... I think that this whole idea of white fragility is interesting. I think that I'm, I'm okay what with it. What do you mean by white fragility? I don't fucking know. I just exactly. hear it a lot. I, I just oh, hear it a lot. Um, I don't mind <laughs> feeling uncomfortable. Um, you know, um, I made myself watch that whole goddamn nine and a half to 10 minutes of that video because as a shrink, as a person, I'm not even related, yes, related to my race, because it's always related to the race, but like I watched that asshole cop's face as he no doubt murdered that man. And I also, mm -hmm. but I've also watched other things and like, and forgive me, I can't remember the guy who fell asleep in the Wendy's drive through but like, that's, mm -hmm. a little, that's a little different. Was he still impulsively shot because he was black? probably because again racism biological but um one of the things that i have made this podcast about um over the last six eight months is talking about tough shit i you know in like yeah. november i had um, I met a, an African American mom who was new to podcasting. I'm still not sure if I get I should call it African American or Black, so I'm just going to be uncomfortable and like err on the side of caution. Whatever, yeah. But I don't know where they're from, so uh, whatever. Um, but so I um, I had her on. She was amazing. Her name is uh, Ariana Coles, and we discussed like we face different struggles and like. Mm -hmm breastfeeding like it's more encouraged for some and it's assumed that like it's assumed that she won't be able to do it but she wants to or there's a pressure to or like all these different things that are not only dependent on race but also like the hospital you give birth at um uh when i was giving birth to my son the and i asked for a c-section because he was backwards and laying on my I, I have like three herniated discs and he was laying on like uh, mm. L5 S1 I know most common but also triggers like PTSD shit for me and I announced that I wanted a c-section she looked at my husband and said is she sure and I almost ripped her head off um you know but uh but so there's all these factors involved and so I feel like I do want to talk about uncomfortable shit. And here is the one time that I just thought I was posting something innocuous because I didn't understand riot versus violence. And because I have patients and friends whose husbands or boyfriends as cops are being targeted and I get their grief. Does that mean they're not racist? I, I don't know. I just know that I'm the one who gets their, their grief. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just think, uh, I don't understand. If, if if I get granted this white privilege, why can't I talk about it? You know, if I get granted this yeah. white privilege, why can't I make a difference? Um, 
I started teaching on OutSchool. It's this um, platform for kids, and I'm probably going to get fired soon because I keep talking about actual real shit in the world, and I've also sworn twice. Um, <laughs> once, once I called someone an asshole, and then earlier today or yesterday, I had been boiling eggs for egg salad for my kids, and I forgot, and I smelled something burning, and I jumped up and yelled shit. So I'm probably going to be fired. But the point is, like, uh, I make okay money, but I'm more doing this because I think we all need uh, a reach out. And if I'm teaching about the Salem witch trials or um, resiliency or um, uh, something, like I'm not going to mince my words. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about the fact that like there's advantages, there's disadvantages. I'm also teaching a class i think i titled it um um girl power and gender equality and i sure as shit have mentioned the fact that like black women and uh women who are disabled are more often the target of um sexual harassment all the again i'm gonna get fired soon but before i do i feel like i'm trying mm -hmm. to speak up so how do I shut the fuck up because I'm not black, but also make a difference because like, I don't expect you to have all the answers. I'm just sort of telling you yeah, my story. I do have an answer to that. Yay! I say, okay. keep doing what you're doing. Will I be shot metaphorically or literally? I mean, and does it matter? I don't know if it does. Um, if I, if the I change- is is it, I look at it like you have a voice and a platform and you're using it to help like make equality like the normal thing. But is that belittling? You know? Right, but is that belittling um, the voice of a black man or a woman? Is that saying that I have more of a uh, I mean, is that acknowledging that, like, uh, you have a voice, and I think you have to use it. I think everybody has to use it. I think how we got in the situation is people weren't speaking up when they saw shit happening that's wrong. A hundred percent. For the record, like, we can't do it as black people alone. It's going to take everybody. And this goes down. I was talking with one of my friends who's in the LGBTQ community. I'm a, I'm a community. Jew, but I want to do this, and I'm going to do it wrong. But, like, that's yeah, how I feel, too. Okay, but I think yeah. it's wrong. Whatever. Yeah. And she was telling me how much racism there is in that community. And I was shocked. I was like, you're a minority, and they're still... But then I was like, you know what? Okay. It's everywhere. And... I think the more we talk and the more we have conversations, the more we can understand different perspectives. That's how we all rise up and that's how we create a solution. Because I believe wholeheartedly that more perspectives you can understand and the more you can realize where somebody's coming from, especially when we're all on the same fucking team. We are, except for the and, extremists, and those I'm a little concerned about, but yeah. Yeah, so we can do it. Like, yes, I think about, because my dad was a correctional officer. He worked for the sheriff's department. I think about being a cop in that situation, seeing something, and also what would happen if I speak up? And there have been you know? some wonderful and horrible, um, but totally publicized, like publicity stunts, you know, issues that have come out yeah. of it. So it's like, what happens if you're a cop that speaks up? What happens if you're a black cop who speaks up when you see a white cop doing that to a black guy? Well, if there's a and news then, camera, you're cool because then you're, you know, but if there's not a news yeah. camera, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not a news camera, then you have to worry about the police you were on the same team, you just betrayed the trust. Now they're looking at you and coming at you from whatever color you are. So I get that. I also know what it feels like to be targeted and harassed by the police. I also know 
Oh, wait, they got a I, job to do. I don't. So um, I'm also a huge <laughs> fan of Seth Meyers, and he's done a really good job of having, you know, um, a lot of the um, black female writers share their stories, um, which are atrocious. But um, would you be willing to share a targeted story? Yeah, I will go. And it's something simple that you will never think it's anything until you see it not happening. Mm, so like, I'm, I've been educating myself on microaggressions, so tell me and let's see if I get it. Yeah, so um, for, we'll, we'll take this. Paula will be like speeding, going like <clears throat> 20, I think one time she's going like 20, 25 over speed limit and like a residential-ish neighborhood. So that's, you know, maybe 50 and a 25. I'm not driving with Paula anytime soon, but and, come on. Yeah, and she, like, gets, and we laugh about it because she gets pulled over and there, you know, she got off one, nothing to do, nothing happened. Um, and the first thing she said, like, oh, you, you know my husband, Nick? Like, we laugh about it. And he's like, no, he's like, well, you know you were going, like, 20 over the speed limit. She's like, oh my God, I'm sorry. And he's like, all right, don't do it. That's it. I get pulled over for, so if you have a stop sign here, right? And then there's like a blind corner you can't see. So I stop like maybe five feet ahead of the stop sign. So I can see around the corner and go. You pulled over, you know, you know what, I pulled you over tonight? I don't, I'm sorry. You didn't stop at the stop stop. And I was like, well, no, I definitely came to a complete stop. And, well, you came to a complete stop past the stop sign. And I'm like, well, you know, you can't see from the turn. Like, yeah, I understand. So you should stop at the stop sign, then move forward, stop again. Was this DC, by the way? I was like, okay. No, I'm in Frederick. Okay. I'm in Frederick, Maryland. We're like an hour outside of D.C. Like okay, okay. 30 minutes outside of D.C. Remember, yeah. this is our connection. Go on. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And I come back to get a ticket. I got like two, two or three points on my license. I had to go to court and fight that. And I have an absolutely, like, I hadn't had a ticket at this point in years. Like, I just, I know, because I'm black, I go the speed limit, I stop at the stop sign, you know, you, you never want to give them a reason. That's what we call it. And No, and it sucks. And I feel so even, bad for parents, mothers, because I'm a mother, I feel so badly for mothers who have to have that conversation. Go on, sorry. Yeah, and it's little stuff like that. And that's not where real. you that's notice. That's huge. And... I get pulled over and I'm like, all the fucking windows go down. I take the keys out. I set them on the dash. I'm like sweating because I'm like, what's going to happen? Is this the time where it happens to me? And there have been other times where it's been way worse than that, you know, on the car in, in handcuffs, sitting on the ground, wondering how it got here because of a story that's being made up. And on the flip, like I'm saying this because this is a real fact that happens. I also have some really good friends of mine who are cops who I love them. I don't and think it's about cops. I think it's I about subconscious racism, conscious racism, uh, uh, yeah. the, um, you know, evil black man or angry black man. I, I don't think it's, I don't want it to be cops versus, you know, yeah. race. I just, yeah. I feel like that it's, one of those things because when you're in a position of power things are amplified i know and i just believe like if you're in that position like the the stuff that normal people can get away with you don't have that privilege i know and what do we do like i'm i'm big i mean i didn't post this because obviously i was shunned and shamed and i felt like a piece of shit but like um, I want to raise awareness. Like if, if I were to revamp the police, first of all, uh, defund the police, 
not defund, but funnel some more into um, poor, you know, minority communities, particularly education. I'm in. Uh, particularly internet access, especially during the time of the pandemic. I'm not so in with um, defunding because I think it's going to be a fucking disaster. Um, but uh, like, how do we? And I don't expect you to come up with the answers. I'm just thinking like, mm -hmm. I wish that um, there was an edu uh, like a psychological, sociological education because I do think we have subconscious, unconscious bias. We also have cognitive biases and like, rather than attending to them, we're really just pushing these narcissistic assholes out this door. Um, and a narcissist is really appealing at first. And then when shit goes wrong, you realize how, what bad leaders they are. Not that I'm talking about our president or anything, but nonetheless, you know, uh, it's a thing and it happens. And um, I've gotten pulled over twice in my life. Um, full disclosure, because it was a long time ago. Uh, once I was 100% driving while drinking. Was I intoxicated? I don't know, but I had a cup full of alcohol in the car, as did my um, friend. We had a convertible, thank God. Didn't stop fully at a stoplight. It was Georgetown. Um, mm. And uh, they came over, took my license. I turned to my friend. I said, dump that shit out on the floor. She dumped the cups out on the floor. They came back. It must have smelled like something. Uh, they gave us a warning. I, a mm -hmm. hundred million dollars says it was because we were two, you know, Georgetown white girl college kids and that shit would not have flown if we were a minority of any sort. And the second time I was actually driving to the ICU, I was sober and it was in an area where we lived that they're like, old, like they're just looking to make money. Um, but again, he let me go probably because I started crying because I was going to say goodbye to like a dying friend. But nonetheless, would that have flown if I were a different color? I don't think so. And yet I don't think that either of the cops realized it, although I was hot at 21. So possibly, but you know, um, like how do we change shit? Like how do we, um, I think it comes from a point of making sure that there's like checks in place agreed like i feel like if you in in one there's also in my community there's tons like there's tons of times where we're like like we know people that grew up that became cops and like we're all cool and wait your present it, community or because you guys just moved so that's what i'm trying to oh yeah so back home there's people i know good friends of mine Oh, it like, doesn't feel like home yet. And, oh, many, oh no, we're gypsy life in right now. We're okay. we're in San Diego, then gonna go back and then back out. So. Okay. But and like they're out. Like I feel like it needs to be made regular, like to work in your neighborhood, like be a part of the community. I totally and agree, but does that mean when, we're dividing? by race or does it mean that we just want to expose races to each other i think that it comes from looking at one like one problem one solution right now that the biggest one is and i feel like you know tackle things and like you know like a triage setting like the police who are killing black men we and women, and women. I'm still pretty that. upset and about uh, Sandra uh, uh, Blant. Yeah. yeah, and Breonna Taylor, and them. And so I think the first thing is putting, and this is just one solution that I find, when you're in a community, you need to be in the community. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Talking to people, because then, one, you're going to know people, and then, you're you're gonna think twice about shooting somebody when there's gonna be a connection there. And I'm saying shooting somebody when it's 
a nonviolent crime. But then I also look at people who are shooting up and doing mass shootings and get walked out. They're but I don't think we're talking about that. I think this is different, right? I mean, I don't think it, we're talking it about... Is, but it is, but I, I think it relates to the point where like George Floyd and every... And the thing is, like, this happens consistently. Like, there's stuff, like, there's also stuff that doesn't get filmed, that I know, isn't out in the I know. world. And I think that he's sitting in his car or, you know, a fake $20 bill. Where is the justice system? It's just, okay, he goes to jail for $20 counterfeit, whatever. But, and then it's like, oh, all hands on deck. This is going down. But then my point of view, I look at somebody who's literally shooting up in a tire school. And because it's, you know, how the media portrays it and all of those things, but then they seem to be able to apprehend them after they've seen, you know, that suspect literally kill people. Like he's shooting. Yeah. And there's no fear of life at that point. And they're not going to shoot him at that when he's literally shooting at you. I also don't and, understand, like shoot the Wendy's guy whose name I can't remember because it's 11 o'clock at night my time, but shoot him in the leg. And then I understand, but I also don't. Um, like, why are we shooting to kill? And I know why intellectually, but emotionally, like jury of your peers and not even always your peers because we're in racist America, but like, yeah. Um, there could be a point where you go and like not have to shoot him. Like, yeah, you know, the police. It's not like you can run from the police. Like he ran, apprehend him, <laughs> let him go do process. The fact that somebody's tried, convicted, and sentenced on the spot—that's the like, that's the big issue. Right. Is oh. that. And it's not a perfect system, tried, convicted, et cetera, but like, let's give it a fucking chance. Like, let, let, yeah. uh, you know. That's what I'm saying. Just give us a fair chance. Like, everybody else gets a fair chance. Right. I also don't, um, I'm going to sound like an asshole, but like, I don't know if it's everyone else. Uh, in 1971, there was a Stanford prison experiment where they randomly assigned people as prisoners or wardens, guards. I don't know what I'm blanking, but like, mm -hmm. it turns out that everyone that got assigned as guards was, became emotionally abusive, physically abusive, like horrible people. So when you put people and i'm pretty sure this was just all white rich dudes because it was done through stanford you know um and uh they acted appropriately to the role they were assigned um mm -hmm. that, that being said like why can't we just give this why can't we give more education and give this a chance and obviously i'm like preaching to the choir here but um I, uh, it's true when people have more interaction, more emotional interaction with uh, people of different races, religions, I'm going to say creeds because it sounds all exclusive, all inclusive, not that I actually know what a creed is. Um, yeah. I did see Black creed Panther. Yeah, I don't know. I saw Black Panther. There were definitely creeds in that, but I've also seen every Marvel movie, so it's not a Black thing. Um, but like when you have exposure and emotional contact, like you do tend to relate more. You do tend to understand each other more. We don't understand or relate on an intellectual level. We understand on an emotional level. Um, and yet, we, we're doing this all wrong. Um, and it's upsetting because it's not, it feels unsafe. It feels more unsafe. It feels even more unsafe, you know. Um, I want to blame the cops, but I can't blame the cops because frankly, I don't want to blame any one group. Uh, maybe Trump's Republican supporters, but like in general, really no. Like I want to, I want to hear people out 
and understand and find some sort of common ground, you know? I may have just had a brilliant moment, but we froze. Or you may be not speaking because I'm an idiot. Ooh. Did you hear what I said? I said, I, we may have just had a brilliant moment because you were paralyzed or I'm an idiot and you chose to ignore me, which is funny because I don't do any no, editing. No, my, my internet cut out. <laughs> I know, I know. Everyone's internet cuts out, but mine is funnier. Um, yeah, I wish there was like an easy solution, but like most things in life, including weight loss, Nick's a great trainer. Um, there does not appear to be an easy solution, but it just is, um, it's upsetting. Uh, it's also interesting because from a woman's perspective, I didn't realize that I had like shit stacked against me until college. Um, mm-hmm. And for better or for worse, I feel like um, uh, black children, African-American children, whatever whatever the proper way is to say it, are informed of this from birth, which is either helpful or is like a slap in the face. And I don't know the answer. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's true. And it's, it's one of those things like, how do you not like, what's the balance? Like you need to tell your children that like, they need to like watch out and be careful because of certain things or then by not saying that, will they not be prepared? I think, or, you, I mean, uh, if it were my or, kids, I would have to tell them, but I'm not in a position to judge and it's just so fucking sad. Yeah. And it's, I think it really comes down. I, I wholeheartedly believe though, like right now, like the, the change is coming because one, I, we're having more uncomfortable conversations than we ever have before. And I feel like now, especially like, like our generations, and then down to like the younger generations, like the teenagers and stuff, like now, I feel like they're fed up with it because there's so much more exposure to everything because of the age we live in. So it's mm-hmm. not like going somewhere and seeing, you know, a different person for the first time. Can I play and devil's I can I play devil's advocate? Um, yes, please. As a woman, the Me Too movement didn't affect me as much as watching the Kavanaugh trials, you know, the Supreme Court dickhead. Um And I remember sitting in a doctor's office and hearing all these men talk about it and trying to explain it to my husband and my father-in-law and trying to explain like, no, like there have been times where I was put in a situation that was really uncomfortable and that could have gone a lot worse than it did. Um, And I don't think anything has changed and I don't think they understand me till this day. And I'm really concerned that this won't be the change. And like, I really wanted to I be believe, the change, yeah. you know? I believe it is. I, I wholeheartedly believe it is because now not only, like there's been things when like realizing that there was racism in the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. I had no, I would never think that. But I had a friend, they like, I saw someone, I was like, hey, like, what is this? I was like, that doesn't make any sense. And they're like, oh. Let me show you how it, and I was like, oh my God. I, and then I realized like part of, you know, I look at Black Lives Matter as like, we're taking this force, but also we're taking everybody with us. Like, I hope, so. I hope so. We all need to be, but... we all need to be treated equally. And I am, know for a fact, it's going to change because it has to. And now, People are really, really tired of it. And there's a whole generation of people who might be on the fence, who might be like hardcore racist. I believe if you're hardcore racist, we're not changing your, we're not changing your mind. I don't know how many, 
I don't know how many heart, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you because I'm a woman and it's like, I'm used to men interrupting me and probably I'm racist, but, um, I, but I apologize. I, um, it's interesting. Um, and one of the reasons I kept like stalking you was cause this happened, uh, last week I was talking to my parents and my mother has back issues among many issues. And she was telling me, they told me this story about how she's feeling better because they found a masseuse that was highly recommended. And then when he showed up, he was black. And I was like, and? You know, like, what's, what's the rest of this story? And so do I, are my parents hardcore racist? Who the fuck knows? I mean, I guess in theory, yes. Um, there's also a woman who um, took care of my grandmother for the last 15 years of her life. And um, my God, I love her. And I, you know, reach out, we reach out to each other at every holiday as do my parents, but like the need to make this clarification of the color of skin and they don't even realize it. And like, mm -hmm. um, so I say that's not a hardcore. Really? I'm talking, it felt really I'm, awkward to me. It, it is awkward because that's just what it is, but it's an easy identifier. I look at hardcore people who are like, no, things are right. Black people are less, gay people, minority people are less than us. That's how I feel the hardcore racist. And maybe, the hardcore you, racist, maybe you have like the, um, the space to feel that, but I feel like if I'm not ashamed of my parents, I'm doing a bad job. No, I wouldn't say that at all. I would say just invite and have the conversation with them. Yeah. Because that's somebody we can bring on our team. Because I also look at this like we need players on the team. And people who aren't aware, knowing they're good people or not, like give them a choice, but let them know that there is a choice to make. Be like, hey, this stuff is happening. Make it uncomfortable. Let them know that these things are happening. And then – it's their choice to react. And make them aware of their sort of subtle subconscious racism. Yeah. And just see, and just see, and it's not, you know, that's not like on a grand scale, but in the meaning of things, I know it just in the felt meaning icky. of it, yeah. it, it does feel icky, but we need everybody to collectively move in the right direction to get a solution we have that there's some people who we're not going to get on our team i know that. there's people in the clan and stuff and they're I not mean, coming on our that, team. I, I mean i can't even deal with the clan and, frankly you know I, the clan and, wants to kill me i'm a jew like i can't even bother yeah I'm like go fuck yourself yeah. yeah but somebody some people like your parents who might not even know made aware because I know I've talked to lots of people that were like I didn't even know and I'm like this is it and they're like oh well thank you because now now I'm aware and I can with awareness comes a little certain sense of responsibility too I think and you're then, being super kind I think that my I think that, and I love you for it but I think that my parents the fact that my parents felt that like they should be warned that uh, the masseuse was a black male is weird and awkward and just feels icky. Yeah, no, it is all of those things. I'm okay, not thank you. Not. Okay, fine, thank you. I mean, because like I, I appreciate not. you're letting these assholes off, but like um, I'm saying icky. that happened. Now tell them, hey guys, like this is kind of fucked up when you do this. And let them make the choice that they want. Life is about people making choices. Whatever choice you make, just invite you to make a decision. Yeah. That is it. And once you're presented with that choice, you can be on our team and help find a solution. Okay. Because but we also need people who are hardcore, like, doing it. And, like, you know what? I'm in it. And then some people are, like, like I, I had a friend I talked to in – he was like bawling his eyes out because he's like, dude, I like, I know we haven't talked in a couple of years, but I'm hearing stuff and I'm realizing like, I've been like doing a lot of like racist tendencies and stuff and bias. And I'm like, 
dude, I was like, you know what? You can't change the past. And also, he, what, like, and this is like people like where I grew up, like there was a lot of everybody, like we all got along. I know for a fact he's not racist. But, but is there something, okay, so this is me as a dumbass white mm-hmm. girl who got accused of a lot of shit that I didn't think I was guilty of, but might have been. Like, but is him asking you to like pardon him or educate him racist because this is the part that bothered me like when i asked questions i was told i should know the answers i don't believe so okay and i bought the books but i'm also like educating children and you know (laughs) the thing is there's different types of people that are going to help with different types of things there's going to be some black people that and and this goes just any people there's some people that don't want to teach you how to do things that they feel like you should already know. Which I, I get a little more and I get that it's, um, it should be on, uh, I get that it should be on us to learn, like white people to learn, not black people to teach us, but we don't have that same attitude towards children. It's not like you have to learn to read, I don't have to teach you. And yeah. I, the thing how, is, was that a racist thing? I don't fucking know, but you no, understand On my both name. sides of it, yeah. There's people like me and tons of other people who are like, yeah, we'll teach, offer the perspective and have these uncomfortable conversations. But then there's also people, you might ask the person who's been talking about this for the last 10 years of their life, who've been fighting for the last 10 years of their life, saying stuff, working behind the scenes, doing all that. And no one's listening, yeah nobody's listening and now somebody's reaching out and they're like well no fuck you i've been doing this shit i know nobody wanted to listen now you do and then on the flip side i'm here i don't know it all i don't know everything but i know the more conversations have the more perspectives are gained the more change that's going to happen so that's what i do and Uh, i think it's it's not necessarily everybody's job to teach it's not necessarily everybody's job to share their experience but there's different positions on the team you got to get in where you fit in and do what you can to the best of your ability me i enjoy talking to people i also am good at seeing a lot of different perspectives and having conversations that aren't emotionally charged so that's what i try to do you know you left out you left out my favorite the wide receiver who can just go yeah and there's them too I know. I mean, it has nothing to do with race. I mean, it, yes, there are a lot of black rap, but I just love that fucking moment. And so I was disappointed that you yeah. um, didn't mention my favorite because oh, <laughs> I swear yeah. I like have an orgasm every time someone goes Whoosh, and I'm like, <gasps> and that's when the big change comes. Yeah, that's you'll know when that happens when you're like, fuck, some shit just happened that is like hammer down like, whoa. But I'm kind of excited. I think we've had some little wide receiver catches. Like, it's not enough. I don't think it'll ever be enough. Um, I didn't realize that the LGBT community didn't have equal rights. Um, Yeah, I had no idea. I thought. Okay, thank you. We're both both horrible people. Good. Yeah. I thought being in that community that everybody was accepting. So did I. Lo and behold, not the case. Well. Um, but fact, I'm, even I'm glad we do. Yeah. So, you know. Um, I don't know how to thank you enough because. Um, thank you. We can do this more. I love these conversations. Okay, I can love, we really? Because. Um, yes. I think that. I love the fact. I love the fact that you experienced this and like you want to talk about it. Yeah, I cried my eyes out for like two days. I don't think it's right. You're literally here helping, trying to change and offer solution for the world. And somebody's like, eh, 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 eh. Like, no, fuck that. Yeah, I know. That's how I feel about that. But I'm also like a white, uh, upper middle class Jew in suburbia who has never really suffered shit. And so I understand that like my opinion counts as less. I understand that right now. It doesn't. It counts as more because you're detached from it and you know there's an issue. But I don't want to be, I don't want to be detached from it. And yet I am afraid. I do feel afraid of being judged. I was, I was fucking crushed because I felt like I had actually been trying to use my platform 
to make a difference. I and wouldn't worry it, about it. I say fuck them. No, no, no. People are gonna be. I say fuck them too, but um, but Nick, I can't, I can't uh, thank you enough. I would love to talk about this again. I would love to find a way to um. For you to educate me, not as my sole black friend, I have two. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> but uh, just as like, let's talk about this openly. Let's learn. You yeah. know, um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize how different experiences were. I grew up in a very white Jewish South Florida, Boca Raton. Um, <laughs> so I had no fucking clue. I spent my freshman year at University of Florida. Uh, at which point no one had ever heard of a Jew and there were more taxidermists <laughs> than where there were anything else. Um, and uh, since then I've gotten smarter, but I've also learned that I need to ask more questions. And so asking questions and um, being stomped on crushed me and now I understand why, but um, I don't want to lose more friends. And actually I don't give a fuck if I do because I want to learn more and do more. Uh, because I, I have done a lot of work to get to this point and to have a platform, not this podcast, but psychology today, that blog is doing awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so, um, please let's talk about this again and let's try to, uh, you help educate me and let's brainstorm together and let's, uh, yeah. let's make shit happen. That's all I got. Honestly. Yes. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Thank you, Nick. Have a fantastic night. You